So back out doing shuttles on the patrol today. I was out on Thursday a couple of days ago. I took the spacer out of the rear shot, set up a little firmer, ended up about 10 psi firmer uh, with zero spacers versus the 0.2 spacer. Felt much better at Moriata. Fast, carry speed, predictable, uses its travel well at the back. Much, much better. More what I was looking for and more what I was hoping out of this bike. Today, a little bit more aggressive trails, Fox Creek, so all the cool stuff at Fox. Did a Strava run of a few of the different trails and PR'd everything or equal PR'd everything. Uh, it's much better, it's much better. So no spaces in that shot. And I've gone to 178 PSI today actually, so a little firmer again. And it feels killer. It's using the, like I said before, it's using the travel efficiently and effectively. And if I was to describe uh, if I was to compare it to how it's felt with the different spaces in, we'll start with the 0.6. Let's say it's it's soft at the start and then it ramps up and hits a wall. So it feels one way on the so on the uh, shallower bumps when it's not really in its travel, and then it feels like a completely different bike when it hits the deeper stuff and it's not controllable. I don't think it's fun at all to ride like that. It's not a lot of grip at the back, no compliance. It's not, it's not ideal. So the point four is a little bit more, uh, like a little bit firmer at the start and then same story, hits a wall. But the wall's not quite as abrupt. So it's, instead of a vertical wall, it's, it's more like that. And then the point two spacer, it starts a little more, uh, yeah, a little bit more rampy at the start again. And then it ramps up into a bit of a wall. Yeah, you know, not too bad. It's it's not really a wall, but I was finding I had to run it too soft at the start to for it to not be choppy in the deep, repetitive, hard, high speed hits. Zero spaces. Pressured up. I started it. I remember when I first did this, I reckon I was running at 170, 172 psi with the zero spaces. And it wasn't it was blown through its travel too easy. It was super smooth, but it was blown through its travel a bit easy, so. 175 felt excellent, but once I started charging real hard on the pace today at Fox, it kind of showed that it was still a little bit not a, not quite enough ramp at the end of the at the end of the stroke. So the spring wasn't uh, it was going through the whole travel before, um, yeah, just in the big hits. So there was the potential of bottoming out, and it just wasn't as efficient, quite as efficient as I like. 178, I, I kind of tiptoed through back and forth. 178, zero tokens, rebound to taste. Uh, the compression dial wound all the way out, so no compression whatsoever. Super smooth, super predictable, carries heaps of speed. You can see the helmet cam that I did today on Fox Long. It's just carrying speed absolutely everywhere. It doesn't get hooked up on anything. It doesn't. What I was finding with the spaces, regardless of what space, it was getting less abrupt as I was taking less space, uh, going to smaller spaces. But I was definitely finding that because I was having to run a real deep sag and real soft off the top, it'd go in and then it'd get hooked up on things. So it wasn't a consistent, efficient use of the travel. It was using heaps at the start and then very resistant to use travel at the, at the end because there really wasn't much left. This, using, like I said, using the travel much, much better. The ramp up's perfect at 178. I don't think I'd go to 180. It's still, if I was to go to 185, it'll put me in a poor position on the bike. I'd be standing too far over the front. 178 brings me into the into the sag. It's probably about 22 millimeters sag. Uh, I'll double check that at 178, see what the sag actually is. But it's, it feels great. There's still plenty of clearance. It's not really suit. It's not deep in the travel. It's exactly what I've been looking for. So to compare this bike with another 27.5 that performs like this, it's the giant rain. The, the rain's been the best bike I've ridden. The Craftworks was actually a standout and a surprise. If the Craftworks had a better fork on it, I think that would be in the running for, for the best bike I've ridden. Uh, the Slash is the fastest bike I've ridden in a straight line, not as good around corners. Uh, not as good through rough corners and, and backing it into rough stuff. The rain, the fastest thing I've ridden. This is as good as the rain now plows as hard as the rain and I think getting used to it it's probably going to exceed it it's probably going to be better so it's leaving me super curious about how it's going to feel when I chuck a super deluxe on the back so I'm going to try and get I'll get in touch with Monza see if I can get a super deluxe 
with a, a medium medium tune maybe talk to transition as well make sure that i'm getting the tune right uh and i'll, I'll get a super deluxe air for this get it set up and just see what the performance is because i know it's a better shot i'm sure that it's a better shot the difference that i've found with the super deluxe versus the fox rear shots is everything's more or less fairly similar most of the stuff's fairly similar but when it comes to the choppy hits these fox shots make the choppy hits feel like they've got square edges the super deluxe makes it feel like it's got round edges so it's just a little friendlier and it, it just gives me more confidence to hold it you know stay off the brakes hold it wide open and really smash through rough stuff so i'm curious to see how to feel with the super deluxe outside of that it's absolutely killer rear shocks much better with no spaces so if you run one of these blocks try with no spaces go as stiff as you can go without losing your compliance or losing your geometry and obviously rebound to taste and if you've got the compression adjustment wind it all the way open i did play around with going back and forth with the uh, compression but any click i did just made a little more choppy another click a little more choppy again and i had to come away from that so zero clicks it's completely open against the wall of open like against the all the way open and it should it's just excellent so if you asked me two weeks ago what this bike what i thought of this bike I would have said it's good, but the rear end doesn't perform very well. The rear shock lets it down. That's what I've been saying pretty much from the start. This rear shock lets it down. Being that I was kind of, I guess, reluctant to go all the way to no spaces because transition have always, you know, last year they brought it out with a 0.4 and then this year they've decided we need more ramp up, we'll go with a 0.6. But to me, it's worse. It's, you know, the 0.6 is worse. It's, it's like they're already a fair way out of the ballpark of what feels good and compliant um, and they say you know all the reviews say it's not a supple back end I disagree it can be supple if you get the right setup on the rear shock and the right rear shock in there I think with the super deluxe it'll be more supple and it'll be as good as it gets so change that shock out it's gonna be sick it's gonna be killer